Welcome to From Days to Years. I'm so excited for you to be here. I'm here with my co-host, Denise. Today is a very special episode of From Days to Years. This series is called If I Tell You My Story. And in the series, If I Tell You My Story, I interview moms who have a path that they've walked, some they've chosen, and some that chose them. And today I'm interviewing my friend, Jennifer. And Hi. Jennifer. <laughs> Her story is about her path with breast cancer. And I want her just to tell you about it. I'm trying not to cry right now. So <laughs> Jennifer, <laughs> I'm so excited for you to be here and I miss seeing you. <laughs> I know, I miss your face. Uh, so, yeah. Where do you want to start? How did yeah. you first, um, how did you even know? Um, so let's see, um, back in 2020, if you, you remember everyone's favorite year, um, <laughs> the let's see, school announced that they were closing about a week before we were going to go to the beach for spring break. And so um, genius that I am called uh, the house and asked if we could come a week early because I was afraid that, you know, well, we, we were just all afraid. We didn't know what was going on. So um, we ended up going down to the beach for about five weeks and, you know, hiding from the rest of the world. Um, but while we were there, I was in the shower and, you know, most of us have in our homes, we have our loofahs and our little scrubby brushes and all the things. And, um, in this rental house, I had a bar of soap and you know, everything was kind of hard to come by. So, you know, I mean, I didn't have, you know, most of the stuff that I normally would use in the shower. So, um, so I was literally like scrubbing my body with a bar of soap and I felt what everybody calls a lump. I felt something on my chest that was not normal and was not there before. And it was massive. Like oh, wow. how I did not feel it before. It felt like a hard boiled egg under my skin, like and way up here, you know, way up high on my chest. So, um, internally freaking out you know no one's voluntarily going into a doctor's office at this time and so um just decided to kind of wait it out for a couple of weeks until we came home and made an appointment with um an OBGYN just so, because of the way insurance and everything works you know I knew that I would have to have the mammogram mm -hmm. ordered by a physician I couldn't just walk up to you know the hospital and be like I need a so, um, so I went into the office just for that purpose. I was like, you're going to feel this. Um, I have no doubt that you're going to feel it. And so I, I just, I'm just coming here as the preliminary step to get a mammogram. And so he felt it and, you know, his, his initial response was that it didn't feel scary to him, but that he would order the mammogram. And had you... And he did you have mammograms before or was this like your first one when you found this the one this was really my first one I had had a mammogram um years before um because I you know just upon a self-exam thought that I had felt something that turned out to be nothing you know and so um so yeah this was this was my first one and uh and can I ask you how old you are at this time so I was okay? 44 Okay. Yeah. So yeah, that's usually like the 40 year old is like the magic marker number that they usually start recommending mammograms. So that's why right. I was curious. Yeah. Between and your so, age and COVID, you know, it was hard to get proper care. Yeah. And it was, you know, it was kind of like the perfect storm of several things. I had had my son at 38 and, mm -hmm. um, at my doctor's appointment, where she normally would have ordered a mammogram at 40. She wanted me to wait because I was breastfeeding. Yeah. So right. she was like, I don't want, you know, I don't want you to go through that. Let's just wait. Well, then we moved. <laughs> so we moved to Atlanta. I didn't have, you know, my new team of doctors yet. And so, right. you know, it was Life just gets in the way. It does. And, you know, and, you know, warning to all like, get your mammograms and you know do it on time and all of that but you know I can't go I can't go back in time and change that so and even then like I don't know 
you just you never know what the mammogram is going to find you know that's true true. and it's once a year so yeah right and like I said like I mean it was huge Mm -hmm. and well that I said I'm sorry to interrupt you and you said um you were on vacation at this house that so like had you done self exams prior to this like you just all of a sudden found this you hadn't been doing the the well, self check yeah well i mean here's the weird thing right so i mean we're all moms so i can i can say this to you guys if i'm and i mean just a regular lay person and i am examining myself I am examining what I think is my breast. Right. Did not even feel like it was on my breast. It was on my chest. That's bizarre. Yes. So I guess if we were all to be educated, there must be some breast tissue that goes up your Mm -hmm. chest wall. Right. Mm -hmm. And so if I'm feeling and doing a self exam and like a circular motion or whatever, and I'm feeling under my armpits and all that, Mm -hmm. I I don't know that I would have felt it. Wow. So literally was on your chest, not even in your boob, just like and like the above it. in the pecs. Yeah, like in the pecs. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent because now I don't have any pecs <laughs> or anything. Yeah, so he right. ordered a mammogram and he also ordered an ultrasound at the same time because he was like, obviously they're gonna see something, they're gonna want to look at it more closely. Um, again, he didn't think it was anything scary. So he just ordered that stuff. And then, you know, two days later I went and had the mammogram. And then um, sure enough, you know, a few minutes later they come in and they're like, yep, we need the ultrasound. Uh, so we had the ultrasound and then the radiologist comes in the room Mm -hmm. and very stern says, I am very concerned. Wow. She says, did your doctor, she said, did your doctor order a biopsy? And I'm like, you have the paperwork. I don't, I don't know. Like he didn't, you know, I didn't bring it in in an envelope, you know, like to get yeah. it by my parent, like <laughs> you have it. I don't know. So, um, I had to wait a couple more days to get the biopsy, um, which was unfun. Um, and then on May the 4th of 2020, I got the call. Wow. So, so now this, what is the time span between the diagnosis or the rate by the radiologist to your biopsy or the actual yeah, final? So I think that the how biopsy, many months? Do what? How many days or? Like what? how many, what was the time span that you had to yeah, wait? Very quick. I mean, I think, oh, that okay, good. Biopsy, I think that the biopsy was on a Thursday and then I got the call on a Monday. You know, the very next appointment that I have was with a breast surgeon, which is kind of a funny thing that it's almost backwards. You think that, you know, you have cancer. Where's my oncologist? Right. 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 First thing, the first thing that, that you book is a breast surgeon. And so, because they want it out yeah, and it's either going to be a lumpectomy or a mastectomy or whatever. Um, but that person ends up being kind of your educator. And you sit in the office with the breast surgeon instead of an oncologist. It's so strange to me. Um, and they tell you what the next steps are, you know, and all of that hinges upon your pathology. So when they get all of the results back from your cancer, mm-hmm. then that dictates the path that you're going to be on. So there's some cancers that say, guess what? You get to have chemo. Yay. And there's some cancers that are like, you know, we need to get it out. Mm-hmm. And, then, you know, if we find out that it has spread, you know, then you might need chemo, you know, or you may not ever need it. So, um, but even, you know, even those surgeons, I mean, they have their own opinions on what you should do. You know, there's yeah. options that they present to you. And then there's, you options- have, were you able to go see more than one surgeon to get a difference of opinion? Or was it just because you were just lucky to get care and you're like, we'll just go no. of, given the circumstance of this the was, year? And- no, not at all. This was such a big deal to me and not being from Atlanta, mm-hmm. um, you know, made me nervous because I didn't know where to go and I didn't right. have that network, you know, right. and, um, you know, if I had been where I lived for 40 years, that would have been a lot easier. But um, yes. no, I actually interviewed three different breast surgeons at three different hospitals because of, of the timing of it. You know, there were two of those surgeons didn't allow my husband to come with me. Right. So, because know, of COVID? 
because of COVID. Yeah. yeah. And so, you know, we would bring an iPad and I'd set it up and, oh, wow. <laughs> and we actually yeah. had to, I would have like an iPad and then I would record every meeting so that I could play it back because it's so overwhelming. Oh, that's good. It is that's a foreign good. language, you know, right. and it's one that, you know, you hope to never learn. And it's well, so overwhelming thing. too, when you get all that information, you can't even process it. So that's why if you can't bring someone in there to take notes, it's a good strategy even. But most hospitals don't let you do that. Literally there are signs in hospitals. So it's very amazing that you got to do this. Yeah. A lot of hospitals have signs where you cannot record anything. Wow. So that was a very, can I say a blessing or fortunate, whichever way you believe, I believe blessing that you were able to do that, you mm-hmm. know? But yeah, taking notes is good. And I mean, first of all, to find out that you have this thing growing in your body, mm-hmm. you find it on vacation, you're with mm-hmm. these unknown doctors, it is COVID time, your husband can't go with you. The feelings and the emotions that you have must have been like, what? How were you feeling? What were you thinking right. during these appointments where you're there by yourself with people you don't know? Now you have to trust your body that you're not a, you're not sure of anymore with, with strangers. Yeah. How did you feel? <laughs> uh, I mean- there was a myriad of emotions. Um, but I think that the, the biggest thing to me was, was that I had a five and seven year old at home. Mm-hmm. So like not beating this was not an option. Yeah. I remember getting so that scary. call from you and just like, I was sitting in the chair and just like, she's like, cancer. I'm like, yeah, what? <laughs> <laughs> Can you repeat it again? Uh, <laughs> And just like, you got to be kidding me. Not Jennifer, not my sunshine, not my forever Cinderella, not not my Jennifer, not this good person that I know, this quote unquote great person. How can she get this horrible thing? And I'm just like, your your husband and your kids and your, your mom must have just been, I don't want to say devastated, but how do you yeah. manage the emotions of your children? Well, and that was a little tricky <laughs> because we had a dog named Gus for 12 years. And he was like my heart dog. If you've ever heard of that term, you know, like the, he was the one, he was Mm. the one. Um, and he, (laughs) he died of cancer like six months before I was diagnosed and it was complete devastation to my kids and, you know, and me and my husband, like all of us. Um, and so they knew that, cancer killed him. So I did not use the word cancer for a very, very long time. You know, they were little, so it was okay to say, mommy has a boo-boo, you know, mommy has to get the boo-boo taken out. Mm -hmm. Um, we had had a neighbor exactly two years prior go through chemo. And so, you know, kind of like how the, you know, the OBGYN didn't think that it looked scary. Well, my breast surgeon didn't think that my lymph nodes looked scary either, but they were. So no one thought, no one thought I would need chemo. Everyone okay. thought. Yeah. That's where I wanted to go back. Cause you had talked about meeting with the surgeon and we kind of got a little sidetracked. So I want to know from you, obviously you needed surgery, right? right? So what, what was the surgery, all your treatment <laughs> procedure, how long of the time span did this go on for? Cause I know it varies with different yeah. operations, you yeah, know, so, the, the you know, cycles of chemo and. Right. So as I mentioned, I interviewed three breast surgeons. Mm-hmm. Um, one was wonderful and I would have loved to have used her, but she only used one plastic surgeon and that she only worked with him and no one else. Mm-hmm. And I met with him and I did not like him. He was oh, wow. very typical controlling, mm-hmm. you know, this is the way way that I do it. I only do it this way. Mm-hmm. I will, you know, give you implants and that's it. You have no other options, you know, period. And I, yeah, I didn't really appreciate that. So, um, <laughs> so when I selected my surgeon, um, he went, he ordered the MRI. So that's kind of the next step is like, okay, now we need an MRI. We need to really see what we're dealing with on the inside. You know, if you, if you have any lymph nodes that are cancerous, they should light up, you know, they should, there should be an indication. And so I had that done. What the MRI told us was that I was not a candidate for a lumpectomy. Oh, so wait, what's a lumpectomy? 
that's where they just take the tumor out of your breast, but they leave the rest of the breast tissue there. Okay. So, um, and then if you have a lumpectomy, you do have to have radiation just to help try to kill any potential cells that are left behind, mm -hmm. right? That are cancerous. So, but I was not a candidate for that as we were thrilled to learn that I had to have a mastectomy. I did not have a choice. Wow. So, and while they were looking at that MRI results, they saw something on the right side. And so I had to have another biopsy, which came back benign. It was fine. Okay. But I was like, no, nah, girl, like you're going to take them both. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're not, not going to be lopsided. This again, we're not, and we're not going through this, you know, like uh, I'm having biopsies mm -hmm. and be scared all the time. We're just, if you're going to take one, just go ahead and take them both. You do hear a lot of women making that choice, you know, where like exactly what you're saying, going, take them both. I don't want to go through this again, because if right. it happened in one breast, it could happen in the other. Right. You do hear, like, I think Angelina Jolie opted to have a double mastectomy and Christina Ag um, uh, Applegate. No. Applegate. That's it. Christina Applegate had the double yeah. mastectomy. So, right. Yeah. Right. So, and because of the type of cancer, I had, it was hormone positive, which meant I didn't have to have chemo, you know, okay. unless it had spread. And so That's good. we were still hopeful, like leading up to surgery that, you know, once we take these out, you know, then I'm done. Yes. Um, and this, you know, I also had to meet with a plastic surgeon, which because of how I work, I met with three. <laughs> um, so I chose a surgeon because of her expertise piece in like um I don't even remember what it's called like micro something it's basically like where they take your teeny weeny little vessels and they can sew them back together and I was gonna do um like a natural tissue reconstruction hmm. because that's basically what I was presented with wait what's what? a natural tissue reconstruction sorry can I tell you that <laughs> that, you know what I was presented with as options for reconstruction because everyone assumes like you know of course you're going to reconstruct your breasts so it was either implants mm -hmm. which I was not a fan of personally uh mm -hmm. because I do have friends who have had implants and now have all kinds of autoimmune issues mm -hmm. that I feel like you know I don't want to you know I don't want to go through all of this with cancer and then have to fight lupus or fight yeah. a secondary cancer cause that is known to be caused by breast implants. And so that's not really the route that I wanted to go. Um, I knew of, of another way to reconstruct using your own natural tissue um, because of my neighbor. So basically there's different types. There's like a one where they take muscle from your back Oh. and somehow, you know, put it up in here. And then the other was where they take tissue from your abdomen and they wow. literally just cut a, a big old section of your abdomen and then they reconfigure it and it's natural tissue. And, you know, if you have the right kind of surgeon with the right expertise, then they reconstruct all of those blood vessels so that, you know, the tissue can live. Um, and there's, it's all natural. It's all parts it's, from you. It's, natural yeah looks natural feels Amazing. natural it's it's miraculous really um so that's the route that I was planning to go on uh so you know chose this surgeon as a result of those plans she is a I would say um more conservative in her approach because she didn't because we did not know if I would need radiation then she didn't want to do that procedure and have it be radiated because right. it, it can cause like a, you know, like it can contract in, during radiation and it'll just mess up all of her beautiful work. Right. So, so wait, why couldn't they take out, you could get the double mastectomy, yes. go through the medical plan to make sure you don't have cancer and then do the reconstructive surgery. Why can't they do that? Right. No, they can do all different kinds of things. Yeah, they can. And they did. And so they put in what they call expanders which is like a very, that. a very thick, hardy plastic implant, uh, which is initially really uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it felt like, you know, like a, like a, um, 
like a like a breastplate, you know, very mm-hmm. uncomfortable on your chest. You know, it ended up feeling fine after because I had that thing for almost two years. Um, oh, wow. Oh yeah. So you know, I guess if I go back to the timeline, you know, we had the MRI. I had to have a mastectomy. Opted for the double mastectomy. Um, went into surgery, and while you're in surgery, they test what they call your sentinel nodes. So it's basically like they inject a dye into your breast and during the surgery, they, they can see which nodes receive that dye first. So mm-hmm. it's like, if anybody's going to have cancer, it's going to be these nodes. So they, t- they test it quickly in a lab during your surgery. And if it comes back positive, they go back in and they scoop out several more lymph nodes. And then they, they send all of that off to be tested. So as luck would have it, lucky me, uh, I had one sentinel node test positive. Now to warn everybody else, right? One tested negative in that, you know, rapid test that they did in hospital. So because one tested positive, they scooped some out and sent it all away. And I had to wait for those, for those results to come back. And so this when is I still up, COVID. So you're still oh, quarantining by yourself in your home and oh, you yeah. still have kids to educate for school and yes. your husband is working from home and you're dealing with this diagnosis and you can't have friends and you nope. can't do nope. your normal because like you're very involved in church. So you can't do that. Mm-hmm. So you're basically held up in your home yeah, dealing yeah. with all of this. And oh, we have I mean... results in... Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And so, and when we got those results, the results were that I got a free ticket to chemo town. Uh, So, yeah. So they tested 14 lymph nodes and six of them were positive, including the one that tested negative in the hospital. So, and the rule of thumb was if you have three lymph nodes, then you have to have, you have to have chemo. So, um, so aside from having chemo and losing my hair, I felt like Rapunzel. Like I was, I mean, I lived in my bedroom. I mm-hmm. lived there. You know? We're going to take a, sh- a short break real quick. 